Did you know that though it was men who wrote the first and most of the cocktail books, even today, women in fact were writing about alcoholic concoctions long before men were. In honor of Women's History Month, that's what we're talking about this episode. If you like this kind of content, this booze-soaked history, then hit the subscribe button below. Like or don't like the video and please leave a comment. Tell me what you think or add anything that you'd like me to know. Oh, hello. Welcome to Victorian era Britain, historical drinkers. Today, we are going to be talking about women's contributions to cocktail literature. But first, of course, we will be making a delectable libation to sip daintily upon while we have our discussion. Let's get started. Ryan, this dress is hot. Can I change? Those Victorian era ladies were bad A's to be able to wear those heavy, hot dresses and corsets and still live life. Ugh, I am, uh, ooh, not for me. Mm -mm. Okay, so the drink that we're making for this episode is a drink that was popular during the Victorian era. It's called a claret cup. So let's get started on it. First, we're gonna put soda water into our mixing glass or whatever vessel you have on hand. It doesn't really have to be a mixing glass. Um, so we're gonna put soda water in. I'm using Fever Tree soda water. If you've watched other episodes, you know I love Fever Tree. It's got tons of bubbles. Um, I'm using the whole can, which is five ounces. And then after the soda water, I'm going to add powdered sugar. I'm putting one tablespoon of the powdered sugar. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect, but as close to a tablespoon as you can measure easily. There we go. Now I am going to just stir this up a little bit while the powdered sugar dissolves into the soda water. All right, and it's still a few clumps in there, but it's looking pretty good. Okay, the next ingredient that we're gonna add is Luxardo Maraschino. So this is our Luxardo here. Now, this is a product that was developed in 1821. So when you read these old recipes, it actually calls for Luxardo by name, which is really cool. Right. And the next thing that we're going to put in is our claret. This is called a claret cup and claret referred to wine in, in specifically, it referred to wine from the Bordeaux region of France. So that's what I have here. I have a Bordeaux blend and I'm going to put in five ounces of the Bordeaux blend. There's two and a half. And I did have this wine in my refrigerator um, to get it nice and cold because you can see we don't have any ice in this glass. We're not going to, I'm not gonna stir it with ice. So I'd like the ingredients to be cold beforehand. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna give this a little stir. Yeah, all that sugar is dissolved now, perfect. And I'm gonna pour this into a wine glass, which is a fair option for this, but you can really put it into whatever you prefer, but do chill it beforehand. And now I'm gonna put crushed ice in my glass. So this is a Lewis bag that I use to crush the ice. It is actually, was designed specifically for this purpose and 
bartenders during this era would have been using Lewis bags. So that's cool. Um, you can get these from Cocktail Kingdom. That's where I got mine. Uh, or you can use, you know, if you have like an old pillowcase or something uh, laying around your house, you could use that as well. You're just gonna, you're gonna destroy it. So don't use something that you wanna keep. Um, okay, so I just put the ice in the Lewis bag and like banged the bejesus out of it until it was crushed. I banged it with, um, you can use a hammer um, or an ice mallet, whatever you have. So, all right, now I'm gonna add the claret cup mixture to the crushed ice. There we go. And then our garnishes. So first we're gonna do a lemon peel and I'm gonna go ahead and do the entire lemon peel. It's gonna look great um, and add the illusion of acidity. So putting this peel, oops, we'll do this much peel. So putting this peel in here isn't actually going to add more acid to the drink, but because we're used to tasting acid when we smell lemon, it's gonna kind of trick our brain so that we think there's more acidity in this drink because it could use a little more than is in it. So there's that. And you saw I peeled it right over the top of the drink. I did that because some of the oil from the peel sprays off while you're peeling it. Um, so I wanted that to spray right over the top of the glass because it's gonna stick to the glass in the top of the drink. And the last garnish is some nutmeg. So I'm using a fresh nutmeg. I'm just gonna grate it a few times. There we go. This is a this is a good one. Mm. Okay, here it is. Let's give her a taste. Oh, so daintily. Mm. You know, it's good. Um, Brian made the point earlier that it's like sangria, and it is. It is absolutely like sangria. Uh, it's wine with some sugar added. Um, it doesn't have fruit, but it does have the Luxardo Maraschino. It's got the lemon peel. Like, yeah, it is very close to sangria, uh, and it's it's good. It's not mind blowing. I'm not gonna crave one of these tomorrow, but I with a little adjustment it could be very very good but i wanted to follow the recipe in the book okay so just to review what we just did what you're going to do is you're going to get a gla glass fill it with ice to chill it ahead of time you're gonna take a bag or something else fill it with ice and crush that ice then you're going to put soda water, five ounces of soda water in your mixing glass. You're gonna add a tablespoon of powdered sugar, stir that up until it's dissolved. Then you'll add 0.25 ounces of Luxardo Maraschino, followed by five ounces of a claret or Bordeaux blend. And then you're going to pour that mixture into your glass that's been chilling, which you have now filled with crushed ice. Once that mixture is in the glass on top of the crushed ice, you're going to garnish it with some lemon peel, and then you're going to finish it with just a touch of freshly grated nutmeg. Then you're going to sip and enjoy. There is a recipe for a claret cup in the first ever cocktail book. This book was published in 1862 and the recipes were compiled by and some were by and the book was written by one Jerry Thomas, a very famous bartender at the time, maybe the most famous bartender ever. So this was that book. Now the recipe in this book is slightly different than the one that I used here, but I will talk about that in a little bit further on in the video. So at this point in time, bartenders were mostly men. The vast majority were men. There was, you know, the odd woman whose maybe family owned the saloon that she was working in, or prostitutes oftentimes were behind bars. Um, but the vast majority were men. I 
do I did do an episode early on in historically drinking about women behind bars in history called the hidden history of women behind bars um, it's very interesting I'll link that at the end of this video if you want to check it out so men they had their saloons and they had their cocktail books what did women have women had their parlors and their housekeeping manuals now Victorian women they were really they were thought of like their ideal was for them to be in the home at least middle-class Victorian women like the home was their realm. They were in charge of making their homes beautiful, keeping themselves beautiful, their children, the food, the servants, um, organizing parties, um, entertaining guests, that sort of thing, like house stuff. They were in charge of all of that. That was their job, it was their full-time job. This brings us to Mrs. Beaton because those women needed some help and they found it. So Mrs. Beaton, she was born Isabella Mary Mason. She was an English woman. She was born in London on March 14th, 1836. And her birthday will be coming up just shortly after I release this video. So happy 186th birthday, Isabella Beaton. She was lucky enough to be an educated Victorian woman. She was sent to boarding school. At boarding school, she learned things like how to play the piano, how to speak French, how to speak German, among other, you know, writing, all that kind of stuff, right? But that was only the first part of her important education. The second part came when she was actually at home. Now, Isabella was one of the oldest of 20 siblings. So when she was home, she was expected to help with the management of those children and of the house. And this she did. And she learned a great deal while she was doing so. In 1856, after a couple of years of courting, she married one Samuel Beaton, who was the son of a ta tavern owner, incidentally. Now, Samuel Beaton was a publisher, and he was a very progressively minded publisher. He was so progressive, in fact, that he was the first person in England to publish Uncle Tom's Cabin. He also was publishing a woman's magazine that was pretty progressive itself. And he was of the opinion that women deserve to be treated equally to men. He wasn't very vocal about this opinion as it wasn't necessarily that popular of one at the time, but that was his opinion. And that is the way that he treated his marriage and his wife. His wife, in fact, partnered with him in his business. She edited that women's magazine. Before long, she started releasing regular segments. Over the course of two years, she released segments in this magazine that were about housekeeping. And not housekeeping in the sense of like how to sweep the floors and dust the furniture, but housekeeping as in like how to run an entire household full of servants and children and guests. So in in 1861, after all of these different segments had been released, she compiled them all into one book and released it. So this is that, oops, this is that book, Mrs. Beaton's book of household management. Again, the year that she released this was 1861, one year before the first cocktail book. She has a recipe for a claret cup in here. Slightly different, and this is the recipe that we followed with the slight change that she asked for a garnish of borage, which is a type of herb and flower um, on here, but I couldn't source borage, and I thought the lemon peel was really a good garnish uh, for it anyway. So that is the only difference. But what household menus covered or what household books covered was everything you needed to know to run your household 
how much to pay your servants, how to manage your servants, how to treat different ranks of guests when they came into your household, how to discipline your children, how to treat, how to take care of sick relatives, and food recipes, of course, a gazillion food recipes. There are more than 1,800 recipes total in this book. There are also, of course, there's a whole chapter of cocktail recipes. Now, women were entertaining. They weren't just entertaining like friends of their husbands or just throwing dinner parties. They were entertaining other women. Those women would gather in the parlors of the homes. And what were parlors? They were like fancy living rooms, okay? So the women would gather in these parlors and the woman of the house would make, or rather have her servants make, the drinks out of these household manuals and serve them at the parties. Now before, so household manuals were around before Mrs. Beaton released hers. Basically once printing presses became like widely accessible, uh, household manuals started to come out. The difference was with Mrs. Beaton's is the way in that, the way in which she organized the recipes. She made it, she made them much more easy to read and follow. Her directions were really concise and encompassing of everything you needed to know to make the recipes. And something she did that was done for the first time in this book was she made every recipe in her own kitchen. Again, more than 1800 recipes. She made them all in her own kitchen and she costed out how much it made, how much it cost people to make them. And she included that in the information of every recipe, which was a new thing. She thought that women should know how much they were going to need to spend to make a certain dish. Very interesting concept, right? Now, even before these housekeeping books became a big thing, there were receipt books that women would keep, or today we would call them recipe books, receipts, recipes, same thing. These receipt books would be written by hand by the women of the house, and they would be her recipes, her recipes for foods, for sauces, for all different stuff that she made to eat, but also for drinks, for different, um, different fermentations, you know, fermentations of different fruits of wines of grains you know how to make beer um but then also how to make things into mixed drinks so there were recipes in these books for mixed drinks and these go back hundreds of years now mostly of course n totally all wealthy women writing these receipt books they would write them out by hand and then they would pass them on from generation to generation. And you can find these online, um, actual like photo, people have photocopied these books through like the Gutenberg project and put them online. So you can try and decipher this old handwriting and weird letters and weird words for things. Um, but they're there, you can find them, they're really cool. Um, I'll try and I'll try and remember and actually link one of those in the comments as well. And so there it is, my friends. That's it. So long before the first cocktail book written by a man, women were writing down drink recipes and passing them on to each other for hundreds of years before this happened. But we, it's not really part of our, uh, our, it's not what we're aware of, right? But it was a very important piece of women managing their households. Um, yeah, so there it is. There is, so this one, Mrs. Beaton's, like I said, was from Victorian England. I did want to show you this one. This is the other one I have a reproduction of. Um, so this is from Old Virginia, housekeeping in Old Virginia, uh, or 1871, I believe, 1879. 1879 is when this came out. So Victorian era 
United States. So that's cool. I will put links to both of these in the show notes. Next episode, we're going to be talking about what women did next as far as writing about cocktails. They did eventually appear in uh, in drinks writing. So I'm going to give you a little teaser. We've got the first ever, a reproduction of the first ever cocktail book written by a woman. We will get into that in the next episode. So that's it for today. But stay tuned for this fun thing. Um, And we're going to do something really interesting with our cocktail for next week, too. So remember this drink that hopefully you made with me today. And we'll talk more about it next week. Now, if you would like to support Historically Drinking, if you want to encourage me to keep doing these fun episodes, you can support without even spending any money by using the links in the comments for ButcherBox or for Coinbase. So ButcherBox, they sell right to your door. They deliver really high quality, humanely raised meats. It's awesome. I love ButcherBox. Um, and Coinbase is where you go to, you know, buy things like Bitcoin. So yeah, if you're interested in either one of those things, follow the links. You can also just straight up support on Patreon. You can find us under Historically Drinking. (sighs) Thank you so much for watching. And thank you, of course, to Brian Bell for filming and editing. Love y'all. See you next time. Cheers.